There are two approved medications for multiple sclerosis that work on B cells. The once every six month intravenous formulation, Ocrevus, and the monthly self-injection, Casimpta. But which one is better? Today we're going to look at differences between these two drugs, their administration, and the results in clinical trials showing their risk of side effects and effectiveness. Let's have some fun. Now, I should disclose as a conflict of interest that I do have $5 million worth of Genentech stock. No, I'm just kidding. I don't have any specific financial conflict, although I'm very interested in this class of medications as I've used rituximab to treat multiple sclerosis for many years. So I was into B cells before it was cool. Also, I did participate in the OPERA trial, which is the study of Ocrevus versus Rebif and recruited patients, although I was not compensated for this. I don't think I have any specific bias in favor of one of these medications or the other. By the way, I'm Brandon B and I make videos about multiple sclerosis every Wednesday. So please subscribe and ring the bell for notifications. And if you find this video useful, please click like. So to give a little background, both of these drugs work in exactly the same way. They are both antibodies that target B cells or B lymphocytes, which are cells in the immune system that make antibodies and also have other functions such as presenting antigens to other immune cells. B cells contain the cell surface protein CD20 and Ocrevus and Casimpta are antibodies that target the cell surface protein, leading to the destruction of the B cells. Virtually all of them, and often you can test B cells, even several months after these drugs are administered, and they will be at undetectable levels. With Casimpta, they come back a little bit more quickly, but the drug is dosed more frequently, once a month versus once every six months. There are actually two separate and independent mechanisms of B cell destruction. One is called antibody-dependent cellular cytolysis, and the other uses separate proteins in the blood called complement, and this is known as complement-mediated lysis, and both of these drugs, Ocrevus and Casimpta, do both of these mechanisms. Now, a big difference between the two drugs is the mode of administration. So to start with Ocrevus, it's given intravenously through the vein, and the typical dosing is 300 milligrams given twice, two weeks apart, and then 600 milligrams once every six months. And it's typically given in an infusion center where you could be monitored because it can cause infusion reactions such as rash, hives, wheezing, and could require other medications, or in rare cases could cause potentially serious reactions. Now, one advantage of Ocrevus is that it's actually been formally studied in primary progressive MS. So it actually has PPMS or primary progressive MS on the label, and that's based on a study called the Oratorio study, which I'm not really going to talk about today, whereas Casimpta hasn't actually been formally studied in progressive MS. Now these drugs are so similar, it's highly unlikely that one would be better in a particular form of MS, in my opinion, but it is nice to know that Ocrevus has been formally studied in a large number of individuals in progressive MS. Also to note is the half-life of Ocrevus is slightly longer. It's 26 days. The half-life is the time it takes for the drug to be eliminated in the body by 50%. So in other words, after 26 days, the amount of Ocrevus in the blood is reduced by 50%. And this could be interesting information if you are planning pregnancy or for other reasons. Casimpta, on the other hand, is given subcutaneously under the skin, kind of like an insulin shot. And the dosing is 20 milligrams weekly for three weeks, kind of an induction to make sure the B cells are depleted, and then every four weeks. Although the first treatments it's recommended to do under observation, just in case an injection reaction occurs. Another thing is it's only approved for relapsing MS and quote active secondary progressive MS and hasn't really formally been studied in progressive MS. About 94% of the patients in the Asclepios 1 and 2 trials had relapsing remitting MS. A small number did have secondary progressive MS. Also the half-life is a little bit shorter, about 16 days. So we're going to take a look at two different sets of clinical trials for the two medications. So to look at Ocrevus, we're going to look at the two OPRAS trials, OPRA 1 and OPRA 2, where Ocrevus Ocrevus is compared to the beta interferon 1A medication, Rebif. And by the way, if you want to learn a little bit more about Ocrevus in general, I have a separate video on that. And then for Casimpta, we're going to take a look at the two Asclepios trials, Asclepios 1 and Asclepios 2, where Casimpta is compared to Abagio. And if you want to learn more about Abagio, I have a separate video on that. And if you want to learn more about Casimpta and detailed information about the Asclepios trials, I'd have a separate video on that as well. One thing to note is that Rebif and Abagio have compared 
been compared against each other in a separate study called the Tenere study, and they're approximately equal in efficacy. Now, it's not necessarily that meaningful to compare different clinical trials because they're compared against different drugs and have different patient populations and different examiners and things like that, but I think it's helpful to give you a general idea. So for Asclepios 1 and 2, the trials that measured Casimpta, we're going to take a look at the primary outcome of all four of these studies, which is the rate of relapses, and it's measured by what's known as the ARR, or the annualized relapse rate, which is simply the total number of relapses per patient per year. So in Asclepios 1, Casimpta had an annualized relapse rate of 0.11, in other words, about one relapse on average per nine years, compared to Abagio, which had an annualized relapse rate of 0.22, so 50% difference between those two. And for Asclepios 2, Casimpta had an annualized relapse rate of 0.1, only one relapse per 10 years on average, versus 0.25 for Abagio. In other words, one relapse on average every four years, a 60% reduction. And again, not a 60% reduction versus placebo, but versus another drug that's active in MS. For the two studies on Ocovis, OPERA-1 showed an annualized relapse rate of 0.16 versus 0.29 for Rebif, a 46% reduction. For OPERA-2, Ocovis had an annualized relapse rate again 0.16 and again 0.29 for Rebif, a 47% reduction. So here Casimpta looks a little bit better, but again you can't really compare accurately across trials. Now sometimes relapses aren't that clinically meaningful in MS because people could have a relapse but improve in two weeks or a month and it doesn't really affect them in the long run. So we like to look at chronic disability or what's known as confirmed disability progression. When someone gets worse and then we evaluate them three months later and they haven't yet improved. This is known as three-month disability progression. And you can see they combine the two trials, Asclepios 1 and 2, and after the end of the trial, 15% had worsened if they were taking teraflunamide or Abagio versus only 10.9% if they had taken Ofatumumab or Casimpta, which is a 27.3% difference. For Ogrevis, they did the exact same thing, combining the OPERA 1 and 2 studies, and you can see that 15.2% had three-month confirmed disability progression with Rebif versus only 9.8% with Ocrevus, which is a little bit better, a 35.6% reduction. Next we'll show the MRI data from the study. So we're looking at new or enlarging T2 lesions as you see in the panel to the right. This is a T2 flare axial MRI. So with Ocrevus in the OPERA 1 study on average people had 0.32 new or enlarging T2 lesions versus 1.41 with Rebif. In OPERA 2 they had 0.33 new or enlarging lesions on average versus 1.9 Rebif with Rebif. If you average this out it's an 80 0.4% average reduction. Now in the Asclepios trial, for whatever reason, the people in the trial had more lesions overall. In Asclepios 1, people taking Casimpta had an average of 0.72 newer enlarging lesions on average versus 4.0 with Abagio. In Asclepios 2, it was 0.64 with Casimpta versus 4.15 with an Abagio, an 83.3% average reduction overall. A very, very slight difference favoring Casimpta. With gadolinium or contrast enhancing lesions as you can see to the right it's more or less the same story in opera one people taking ocrevus had on average 0.02 new gadolinium enhancing lesions versus 0.29 with Rebif. In OPERA 2, it was 0.02 versus 0.42. If you average it out, that's a 94.4% reduction. Very good. Again, not versus placebo, versus an active comparator. In Asclepios 1, people taking Casimpta had on average 0.01 gadolinium enhancing lesions versus 0.45 with Abagio. And in Asclepios 2, it was 0.03 with Casimpta versus 0.51 with Abagio. A 94 5.9% reduction, slightly better than Ocrevus. There's also one thing the Asclepios trials looked at that the OPERA studies did not, which is something called serum neurofilament light chain. Neurofilament light chain is a marker of central nervous system damage that can be detected in the blood, and it's been shown to correlate with multiple sclerosis relapses and disability. And in the Asclepios 1 trial, for instance, the same was found in the Asclepios 2 trial, which I'm not showing here, 
Ofatumumab or Casimta was better at decreasing serum neurofilament light chain compared to Abagio. So Casimta was shown to be more effective in preventing central nervous system damage based on this blood test. We'll now move to some of the different side effects of these medications. So one of the major side effects of B cell depleting drugs is getting reactions to the drugs themselves. These drugs deplete B cells, break open their contents, cause a cytokine storm and can cause rash and hives and other problems. And it seems that the rate of reactions is a little bit less with Casimta than with Ocrevus. So when they're infusion medications like Ocrevus, we call them infusion reactions. And when it's a subcutaneous injection, as with Casimta, we call it an injection systemic reaction. And you can see the rate of reactions is a little bit higher in the OPERA trials. So in OPERA 1, the rate of infusion reactions was 30.9% and then 37.6% with the OPERA 2 trial. And in the Asclepios trials for Casimta, it was 16.1% in Asclepios 1 and 24.1% in Asclepios 2. So a little bit better with Casimta. But if you look at the rate of serious infections, it actually seems to be somewhat lower with Ocrevus compared to Casimta. And the OPERA 1 and 2 studies combined, it was 1.3%, whereas in Asclepios 1, it was 2.6%, and in Asclepios 2, two, it was 2.5%. So nearly double the rate of serious infections. Now these are immunosuppressive drugs. They deplete the B cells, but really most people don't notice an increase in the rate of infections. And even if they do, they're usually mild, things like mild urinary tract infections or superficial fungal infections or cold sore outbreaks and things like that. Serious infections are uncommon. As we'll discuss in a moment, the dosing of these medications is such that I find it very hard to believe that Casimta is more dangerous. This probably has something to do with the nature of the patients themselves or the way serious infections were classified in the studies. Now there are a few other random issues. One is that some people had some concern that Ocrevus could be linked to breast cancer. They did an analysis of both the OPERA studies, the relapsing MS study, and the oratorio trial, the pro primary progressive MS trial, and it turned out that six of the women actually got breast cancer taking Ocrevus versus none with Rebif. And you can see the denominators there as well. Or, or taking placebo, as in the oratorio study, because it was a placebo-controlled trial. Now, this is a little bit unusual. The product label says, quote, an increased risk of malignancy, including breast cancer, may exist with Ocrevus, although it turns out the six out of 781 women taking Ocrevus who got breast cancer isn't much different than what you would expect in the general population not taking any drug. So it's almost as if those taking Rebif or placebo may have had less breast cancer rather than people taking Ocrevus had more breast cancer. It's a little bit unclear, but there's no definitive evidence that it causes breast cancer, but it is a concern. Likewise, with Casimta, there's an issue with more people taking Casimta getting appendicitis for some reason. In the Asclepios 1 and 2 trials, eight people taking Casimta got appendicitis versus only two with Abagio, and eight seems like a lot of people considering a lot of these participants are older in their 30s and 40s who are at relatively low risk of appendicitis. Now, I wouldn't specifically expect this drug to cause appendicitis. It may be a fluke finding, but we'll look to see if there's further information in the future. Now, there's an interesting thing with the development of these two drugs in that with Casimta, there was a very good dose finding phase two trial. So researchers studied different doses of Casimta and they chose the dose that was the lowest that was still successful successful in suppressing gadolinium enhancing lesions and they chose that dose as the dose for the phase 3 trials which eventually became the clinical dose. Whereas with Ocrevus the dose is more or less arbitrary and potentially a stronger dose and it may be overdosed, in other words giving you an intent increased risk of toxicity without additional clinical benefit. However, a fascinating post hoc analysis done by Stephen Hauser and his colleagues at University of California, San Francisco, found that Ocrevus may actually be underdosed. And what they did is they looked at people who have a different body mass index. So the thing is that Ocrevus is given as a flat dose. Everyone gets 600 milligrams regardless of their body size, but bigger people are effectively getting a lower dose of Ocrevus, whereas smaller people are effectively getting a higher dose. So if you look at bigger people, people with a higher body mass index versus smaller people, and you look at things like relapses or new MRI lesions, it turns out the drug is equally effective. 
but if you look at disability progression, there's actually a difference. So this line represents no difference in disability progression, and to the left is a difference favoring the drug, and to the right means that the drug is actually worse. And these dots are the means, and these lines are the standard errors. And you can see that bigger people with a body mass index greater than 25 who are effectively receiving less of Ocrevus, they did do better, but it was not statistically significant. Whereas if you look at smaller people with a body mass index less than 25, they achieve a very clinically and statistically significant difference in disability progression. So it could be that Ocrevus is actually underdosed and Casimpta is even more underdosed, and the dose that we need to stop relapses and new MRI lesions is completely different from the dose we would need to stop disability progression. So I don't know what to make of the whole dosage dilemma, but my overall opinion is that these two drugs are very similar. I think they're comparable overall in terms of efficacy or safety. It's hard really for me to say that one is better than the other, so I think most people will choose based on pragmatic reasons like convenience. What's more convenient, doing a self-injection or going to the infusion center or cost or other factors or maybe you want to be on a drug that's been around a little bit longer, for example. I want to know what do you think? Do you think one of these two drugs is better than the other? Are there any questions you have that I left unanswered or do you have suggestions for future videos? Please post in the comments below.